everyone. During December, my husband Jeff and I binge-watched every episode of Game of Thrones, which I've been avoiding because I'm pretty squeamish when it comes to violence. But I powered through it because I love the look of the show, especially Amelia Clark, one of its stars. She plays Daenerys Targaryen, and she's got one of those faces that just screams, paint me. So I found a screen cap of her taken directly from the show, and I drew a light pencil outline of it on my paper, and then I applied masking fluid wherever her hair was the whitest. Her hair is platinum blonde, so I used a lot of masking fluid here, and you can kind of see it. Masking fluid goes on white, and mine dries to a shiny, pale yellow. It will resist any paint I put on top of it. One of the most challenging things about painting white hair is identifying and mixing the muted colors that often appear in it, especially when it's in the shadows or next to something colorful. I've already done quite a bit of underpainting here on her face and her blue cape, along with some of the colors in her hair, which range from gray to blue to pink to gold. And now I'm adding more color to her face. The right side is brightly lit and very pale, and the left side is darker. I think it makes sense to paint the skin before the eyebrows, and this is the first of several glazes I'll use on them. Right now I'm just trying to establish where everything is on her face, and I'll tighten it up later. I'm always relieved when I paint the irises and my picture starts looking like a person. Her eyes are a sort of blue-green color, and I'll fine-tune them later on. Game of Thrones has a huge cast of characters, and they all have fascinating faces. I could easily see myself painting most of them and having a great time. But Daenerys looks like someone Botticelli would have wanted to paint, and I wanted to paint her too. Also, I painted a lot of men this year, and I was dying to work on an unlined feminine face. I'm adding darker blues to her cape, which I plan to keep pretty loose and basic. I'm using cobalt blue, cerulean, cyan, and deep blue for this. The costumes on Game of Thrones are fantastic, but I was happy to paint something that was relatively simple here. I just intensified the colors on her neck, and I'm doing the same with her face. I flooded it with plain water and dropped in another round of color. The water will help the paint spread out in a smooth way that mimics skin. Also, it will fade a bit as it dries. Daenerys wears her hair in a variety of complicated styles featuring different kinds of braids, and luckily for me most of the braids are in the back here so I don't have to paint them. But she does have some you can see on the top of her head, and the way I approach them is to identify and paint the darkest parts first. Again, the masking fluid is protecting the whitest parts of her hair, so I'm concentrating on anything I see that is darker. When I thought about painting this character, I imagined that her coloring would be perfect for watercolor and I'd have an easy time. Light hair always means fewer layers for me to deal with, but the colors in her hair were a lot harder to pin down than the ones you might see on someone whose hair is dark brown, and I made lots of little color adjustments along the way. I corrected my colors using complementaries. If a color was too orange, I added blue to it. If something was too pink, I added a little green. And if something was too yellow, I added purple. And I watered most of those colors down until they were as light as I could get them. And now I'm refining the features. I'm working a little larger than I normally do for my videos, and I'll probably continue to do so. Painting larger is more comfortable for me, and hopefully you'll be able to see things better when I zoom in. But for my current video setup, and as far as time is concerned, an 11 by 14 painting is about as big as I can go. Making those eyebrows darker felt good. I like the contrast between her hair and her eyebrows, and any painting where I get to use red, yellow, and blue a lot makes me happy. I'll spend some time on the rest of her hair, which spirals down her cape like a couple of water slides. That means I've got more muted colors to mix and lots of little decisions to make. These colors are pretty rough, and I'll refine their edges as one of my last steps. 
Next, I'll slow the video down a bit so you can watch me really get in there with her features. This painting took me three and a half hours to complete, so to create a video that isn't too long to watch, I sped up most of it 30 times. But in a few places like this, I've changed the speed to 15 times. I know it's still very fast, but hopefully you'll be able to see more of what's going on. This is my favorite part of painting any portrait. I mentioned that I was squeamish when it comes to violence and especially torture, and if you're the same way, I wouldn't recommend watching Game of Thrones alone. Several times I had to leave the room until Jeff told me it was safe to come back, and I didn't just hide. I put on headphones and played loud music. One time I went into our little laundry room and put some clothes in the washing machine in an attempt to drown it out, and I'm happy I did. I'm not a complete wimp. I watched all of Breaking Bad without even closing my eyes once, but this show is over the top. Heads roll. A lot. And that's just the beginning. But it's worth it because there are a lot of cool and powerful female characters, especially Daenerys here. And I know I'm very late in the game to be saying this, but spoiler alert, she has three dragons. And if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that in this scene that I'm painting, she's just about to unleash one of them on an enemy. These dragons are Godzilla level amazing, and the CGI is completely convincing and beautiful. Okay, now I'm adding a blurry and sort of smoky background here. I'm painting with a lot of the same colors I've already used, and I wanted the top third to stay sort of light while still defining most of the curls. Earlier in December, I painted a series of U2 concert scenes where I made up the smoke and I had so much fun with the randomness and wild color this added to my paintings. The background here was the last thing I worked on during my second painting session and it took a few hours to dry completely. If you are flooding your watercolor paper like this, make sure you've secured your paper to some kind of board, especially if you're painting on 140 pound paper like I am. I'm using blue painter's tape for this. While I was talking, I removed the masking fluid from the now dry painting, and you can see the little flyaway hairs this created. I'm going to spend the rest of the video softening the edges created by the masking fluid, and just for fun, I'll paint more flyaways using some opaque white paint. In some places, I'm just rubbing my damp number one round brush along any borders that seem too severe. In other places, I'm doing the same thing with a small amount of paint on my brush. I think this is a really crucial step to making a portrait look more realistic and convincing, but for me, that meant adding another hour of work onto this painting. And this next part is my reward for doing that extra work. I'm adding little wispy hairs to the ones I've already got using white gouache, which is an opaque white paint that I use sparingly in my watercolors, if at all. These individual strands really soften her hair and make it look more natural. And again, it's super fun. Here's the finished painting. Thanks a lot for watching.